people are really different. And the main theories that we use to explain uh, social and political behaviors are really social theories. You were raised that way. Um, but anyone who's ever had kids or known kids or know yourself or any of your friends, um, even though you may grow up in the same background, go to the same school, same SES, we're all actually quite different. We perceive things differently, feel things differently, take in information differently, and actually choose experiences differently in what we do. And so the idea that it's all socially engineered um, was just a little bit absurd. Uh, to me anyway, and I think to a lot of scholars. And so it pushed to me to start looking outside of the boundaries that you know, we're usually constrained in is you know, education, income, social background. And there's a lot more to that. So I did a, um, uh, my PhD is in uh, political science and political psychology, but I uh, did a pre-doctorate in genetic epidemiology at the Queens Institute of Medical Research, so it's right up here the road in, in Brisbane. Um, and then in between uh, my pre-doc, went back, finished my PhD at Nebraska, and did a postdoc in psychiatry and human genetics at the Medical College of Virginia. Um, here I'm working on a book project. So um, we've collected uh, a great deal of data on um, genetics, hormones, um, uh, brain imaging, on political and social behaviors, uh, political co cognition, uh, affiliation, vote choice, that type of thing and putting that all together into uh, a monograph and uh, trying to finish the book project while I'm here. We're focusing on just kind of the main themes of human behavior. So approach and avoid. Um, how do you know it? Do you, uh, your personality, uh, in groups and out groups, um, affection, emotion, kind of focusing around these large themes of what it is to be human. And then in those themes kind of wrapping up um, the biological mechanisms behind them so that when uh, the first time when you hear a loud noise and you jump, um, what's the mechanism behind that? How does your sensitivity to threat then come off in the way you uh, choose your political attitudes, things on like immigration or defense issues? So we're trying to tie in these uh, basic kind of fundamental human processes to our political attitudes of the day. Uh, I happened to come across, I don't even remember exactly how I came across the center, I know it was, it was it's fairly new, um, and recognized some of the names in the literature. I'm, um, so like Margaret Levy, her book is required reading in just about every kind of core comparative or political economy class that you take at university. I, I can't imagine a program that wouldn't assign it. And so it's, it's some of these kind of names that are here at the center were actually stood out. And that made me then look at the website and look at the center. And then I saw the, the fellowship program and thought, well, it's a, a terrific opportunity to come out here. Um, you know, you get uh, time off from like your normal work model, knock out the book. And it also puts me really close to one of the major labs that I work with, um, just right up the road in Brisbane. So yeah, it was pretty ideal that way.